I wanted to touch on a subject that I think comes up quite often, and for me, I find it extremely troubling. I just had one of the providers here at the clinic come over and tell me that a patient called in and he expressed concern that his primary care physician uh, wanted to take him off of the treatment that we had placed him on, specifically as a hormone imbalance or uh, testosterone deficiency, which we are currently treating. And the reason cited for that was his BMI has increased over the last year since his last well visit. Now here's the problem. In America, and I presume in most of the world, physicians are taught that BMI is a good metric of overall health because as they will often tell you, uh, all-cause mortality rates increase as BMI goes up. And that is anecdotally true. However, we have to further analyze what exactly BMI is and what is the correlation between elevated BMI or body mass index for those who don't know the acronym specifically compared to someone's overall health or increased rate of mortality or disease. So first let's assess. BMI is an old metric that was derived in the 1930s. Essentially it just takes into account your overall weight and your height. Now when you have somebody whose body mass index based on a formula that is derived of, of uh, their height and their weight, uh, it spits out a number. If your number comes back over 30, you're considered clinically obese. Now, we have to consider what exactly goes into someone's weight or body mass. You have bone, you have your organs, you have various other tissues, your skin, your hair, your nails, uh, you have your muscle, you have your fat, and you have your water content. Now, your height is not necessarily something that's really going to be changing here, but your body mass is an ever-changing thing. Now, theoretically, specifically in America, people tend to be overweight these days. We're in 2022 and people tend to be overweight when it comes to body fat. Now, yes, increased body fat will increase your overall risk for pathology or disease or risk of mortality. We are not going to argue that point. But body fat specifically is only one of the key components that goes into body mass index. Now, some cardiologists have argued that overall BMI increases may put a little more strain on the heart. And again, I'm going to put that in with an asterisk because in the extremes, for example, a 300-pound bodybuilder with low percentage of body fat, yes, there is an argument to be made there that there is going to be more strain on the heart. But for the average patient, let's take 98% of the patient population that we're dealing with here, an increased BMI in and of itself is not specifically indicative of an increase in all-cause mortality or disease. Because once again, if your body fat percentage or overall body fat mass is reduced as a uh, combination of nutrition, exercise, and a proper hormonal balance, while your body mass index is increased via the gaining of muscle mass, which is more dense and carries more weight per volume than fat, your BMI may essentially increase in that first year of treatment if you're leading a quality lifestyle and you didn't have a ton of weight to lose. So if you were borderline, you were just a slightly overweight uh, person but not clinically obese, uh, but you started to lift weights and you were on testosterone replacement therapy and your nutrition and your sleep and recovery quality w was good, and you happen to put on a decent amount of muscle and lose a little bit of fat at the same time, it is quite uh, normal for your BMI to actually increase in that first year from your previous well visit. But we have to, again, assess why is your BMI up. It's because you gained muscle. You may not have lost sufficient uh, uh, weight in terms of overall uh, weight on the scale, but weight just tells you how much gravity loves you, how, how, how much the earth is trying to pull you down. And if you have dense muscle mass, you're going to weigh more. All right? So don't take your BMI as an end-all, be-all of your optimal health. Granted, if you're severely obese and you know that you need to lose body fat, by all means, take measures. But if you just happen to gain a couple of pounds because you went on testosterone replacement and anyone is trying to tell you you are less healthy today than you were previously strictly based on BMI, you need to ask them to explain a little more and perhaps give that individual a chance to become a little more educated and stop following an outdated guideline that was set almost 100 years ago. Remember, every five years in medicine, articles can no longer be cited as credible. So if we're using a metric for research of five years of research or newer, why are we going back to a hundred-year-old metric that is really not utilized anymore? Think about that for a moment and ask yourself, where is the real agenda? Mm -hmm.